Year after year, Garden City educators experience great pride in the accomplishment of graduates of the Garden City school system. This evening, we continue that tradition by publicly recognizing one of the many successful alumni. John W. Quinn was born and raised in Detroit and graduated from Garden City East in 1980. Two years later, John joined the United States Navy. Throughout his distinguished 20-year career, he sailed around the world on carriers, battleships, destroyers, and received numerous military decorations, including the Navy Commendation Medals, Joint Service Achievement Medal, and four Navy Achievement Medals. He retired as a Senior Chief Petty Officer in 2002. John is the best-selling author of Someone Like Me, an unlikely story of challenge and triumph over cerebral palsy, he joins us today from his current hometown of Tucson, Arizona. You can see why Mr. Quinn has been selected as this evening's distinguished alumni. He has used his education very well. Who better to bring these graduates a congratulatory message, Mr. John W. Quinn. Thank you for that warm introduction. To the graduating class of 2010, I bet I know what's on many of your minds. Who is this guy? And more importantly, how long is he going to talk? Because I've got a party to get to. <laughs> you see, 30 years ago, I had the same thoughts. Don't worry, it's just going to take a few minutes. I grew up over here, over on Gilman Street. It's the big house with the anchor parked on the front lawn. My brother Jim lives there now with his wife Sally and their two children. Jim is just one of my seven brothers and sisters raised in that home by my parents, Edgar and Shirley. Many of your parents might know my father by another name, his alter ego of Fred the Ice Cream Man. My childhood was fairly typical for children growing up in the 1970s. We played Nerf football out in the street, home run derby in the corner lot, and rode our Schwinn Stingray bikes around the neighborhood until the street lights came on. But as nostalgic as my life on Gilman sounds, my childhood was considerably different from most kids because of one simple fact. I was born with cerebral palsy, which is a condition where my brain and my body don't communicate very well. CP affected the muscles in my legs and my arms, as well as the muscles that control movement of my eyes. I was in constant pain. When I was a kid, mom drove me a couple of days a week to Children's Hospital, where I underwent grueling physical therapy sessions with someone I refer to as the administer of pain. When not at Children's, I was made to do my exercises at home. It seemed like I was always striding around our living room with thick surgical rubber tubing looped around my skinny legs in the hope that they would grow strong and true. I, I walked with a limp, wore thick glasses, and long pants all summer long. As sick as I was growing up, my parents raised me to believe I was no different from anyone else and could accomplish anything I put my mind to. So when I told him I wanted to join the junior high wrestling team, Dad said, sure, go ahead. Just don't come home crying, saying it's too hard. Finish what you start, mister. Now, I never won a match during my entire wrestling career, but I kept my word to my father, and I never quit. When I told my mom and dad of my lifelong dream of joining the Navy, they patted me on the back, and they wished me luck. Well, I failed the entrance physical to join in the military. I fell over when ordered to get down into a catcher squat. You see, I was too weak to hold up my own body weight, and the Navy told me they couldn't use someone like me. Arriving home in shame, I told my dad I couldn't pass a physical because it was too hard. 
My father looked me square in the eye and he said, John, life is hard. Question is, what are you going to do about it? The next day, he found me down in the basement of that house on Gilman, struggling to get into the catcher squad. I worked out every day for a year in that musty cellar, and I, then I tried to join the Navy again. This time I passed with flying colors. I think I was the best duck walker in the entire building. <laughs> when blood poisoning ravaged my legs in boot camp and brought me to the brink of being discharged and sent home, I refused to give up on my dream. I kept at it. Ten grueling weeks later, I graduated from basic training with my parents sitting proudly in the grandstands. Graduates, you're going to leave here today and you're going to find out a few things fairly quickly. You'll learn that there are people in this world that will place roadblocks in your way and, and they'll smile as they do it. These folks will use words like impossible, never, or phrases like that's just the way it's always been done around here. I've met those people and if I had to listen to them, I wouldn't be standing here today. A kid who left his hometown 30 years ago with a limp and a dream of serving his country, only to return as a senior chief petty officer of the United States Navy. If I had listened, I would have never begun typing out a memoir which has recently been published and now inspiring people all over the world. Graduates, when you, when you leave here, you will find that life is hard. My question to you is this, what are you going to do about it? May God bless you all and may God continue to bless this great nation. Thank you.